So what I've got here is a 1.4 kilo brisket. Good morning! Welcome to Phil's Camping Reviews. This was meant to be a live video, but unfortunately I ran into some issues like I normally do here, so sorry I cannot do this live. So if you're watching this now, on the 12th of June, well today's the 13th of June, on the 12th of June I started preparing a brisket that you see here. Now we did that live. So if you want to go back and watch yesterday's video, which is filmed on the 12th of June, 2023, we prepared this brisket live. So what I've got here is a 1.4 kilo brisket. And what I've done is I went to the local barbecues galore store just down the road, and I went and purchased this rub called the World Champion Cork Crew Barbecue Jacked brisket rub that one there and I covered this live on air yesterday with this one so today we are going to cook it so it's had all that time since just after lunch yesterday it is now 9 30 a.m. so we're definitely gonna have to get this in here and start cooking as quick as possible so without further ado, let's make a start on this. As you can see, I've got this tray here with a trivet on, on it. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the base, as I mentioned yesterday, to help it from getting too hot at the base. So we're just going to do that right now. Okay. I want to, I want to be able to eat this tonight in a respectable hour. Now, what we're going to do now very important it's critical that we monitor the temperature so I've got my trusty little meter thermometer here so I might put it on this side here we'll poke it through the thickest part of this of the brisket here that should be ideal I'll just clean my hands here you might notice I've got the Nuvi the nudie top on today <laughs> as I mentioned in a live video video about a week ago I did a video on this introducing the Nuvi range of clothing that's that's the company's local here to where I live here in beautiful central Queensland I've got to get this in here so what I've done now is I've placed it inside the oven and I've turned it on a real low heat, so it's going to be really interesting now. Let's set up the meter. Just in my luck, this thing wants to do an update. Internal temperature, I want it down below 200F. Okay, I don't want it any higher than 200F. So let me keep this going for a while. I'll run it for about half an hour and I'll come back to the video and then show, let you know what the outcome is. Approximately half hour later, and I'll tell you what, guys. Just as I suspected, this so far is working brilliant. I mean, there is no problems getting that temperature down nice and low. And right now, the internal temperature is sitting on 162F. My issue right now is this going to be ready in time because I've got visitors coming over to... <laughs> yeah, this is... I'm under pressure here. First time I cooked it like this and... <laughs> I gotta, I gotta put this on a plate for visitors at 5 p.m. <laughs> How crazy is that! This is, excuse me, oh, I'm thirsty now. Whew. Ah, my mum just brought over a nice icy cold glass of cordial. Unfortunately, I don't have any cold drinks in here except for half a bottle of rum and coke, and I don't really want that right now. So, I need to get some drinks. I need to stock up my fridge again. It's been a while since I've done any shopping. So, I'm using one of these meters. 
You should have seen these, so they're Bluetooth thermometers. I can't show you right now, that's the charging station for it. But it's sitting in there, I poked it into the state. So it gives me an ambient temperature and it also gives me the internal temperature. So right now, the internal temperature of the meat is 73 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to turn that down because that is cooking a bit too fast for my liking. Because when I started cooking this, the internal was 55 Fahrenheit and that was about half an hour ago. So in half an hour, we've climbed up 25 Fahrenheit. I want it to cook slower than that, so I probably should have left it on that low setting before. Now, I didn't preheat this. Ideally, I probably should have preheated it, to be honest. This here heats up pretty quick anyway. Now, I'm attempting to cook it this way because I want to see if I can be able to cook a brisket while I'm out camping. Now, I mean, that's what we got here right now. We're cooking the brisket just using these a stove that uses these standard size, you know, butane carriages. In fact, I better get one spare here because I know the one that's in there now hasn't got much life, much <laughs> life left, hasn't got much gas left in it. So I don't want to waste it. I want to use it all up. So as soon as the flame runs, comes, runs out, runs out, <laughs> goes out. Man, I hate the way they package things up nowadays. Far out. There's not one thing that pisses you off. There's something else that pisses you off. Something I haven't described yet. We haven't done these wood chips. Now, I'm not sure if the wood chip idea is going to work. I had a plan of using another one of these grates. I think this one's too small. I'm going to try it. Because there's another shelf above the brisket in the winter well oven. Because you can have two shelves inside this. Now if this fits inside there, I will be able to place some wood chips on the top. Yeah, just as I thought, this is too small. Inside that tray with the water at the base, it's got the trivet on the top. There's a bit of space on the front left there where I think I'll be able to put some of this in. Now what I normally do, I normally like to pre-soak these for half an hour. I know it's just something I do because it, I find that it smokes more. And also what I found is that it doesn't catch a light as easily in case you have the flame up a bit too high. Which is very easy to do so i'm just going to go grab a knife or some scissors i mean i've got them under here but they're under this ply now so i can't access it with all this stuff on the top so i'm just going to go grab a, a knife out of the kitchen in the house because i'm in the back of the house you can probably see me garden shed there <laughs> so i'm pretending i'm camping in the back of the house which i do a lot and that's where a lot of film a lot of my reviews videos so i'll go get some scissors i'll cut this up and I'll show you how I prepare the brisket, the, um, the smoking chips. Notice it's jumped up an extra 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've had to turn it down. In fact, just after I turned it down, the gas canister run out. So this is empty now. So I've got a new one in there now. But what I've done, I haven't turned it on yet. Because we've got a fairly warm day today. And I've still got the sun bouting down on this. And I think that's helping to keep the temperature in there. So it's sitting on about 155F Fahrenheit. We're going to let it drop down a bit more because I don't want that because at this rate, this will be cooked in about five hours, which will bring it to, what is it now? 10 o'clock, which will bring it to about three o'clock. I, I don't want it to be ready that early. 4 o'clock would be ideal. I'm going to try to push it so it's ready about 4. Ideally just after 4. 4.30 would be better. But 4 o'clock would be perfect. So I'm going to try to cook, slow down the cooking process. So I think this is the first time I try. Now I can see I think this is going to work quite well. 
by the way i wish you were here if you could smell this it smells awesome but what i want to do now i like to get a small cup like so like yay and then what i do is i form a cup put the smoking chips inside that alfoil a lot of people go and buy you know those expensive metal containers to put the smoking chips in i just make my own there we go now i'm going to place that inside here at the front left corner we have enough room now hopefully that will get enough temperature in there to do some smoking to get some smoking action happening so we'll see with time if that happens so in the meanwhile okay this is a lot better now all right I'm seeing now that's dropped the ambient temperatures now dropped down to 141 degrees Celsius there now this is now telling me that we've got approximately seven hours before it's cooked so that's awesome so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn this on before it drops down too much now we're lucky today there's uh, there's no breeze whatsoever so this is a perfect day to be doing this even though if i'm out camping like i mentioned yesterday this stove here it actually shields quite well from the breeze i don't find the flame blows out as it does with the conventional you know those smaller butane gas stove one conventional single burner ones they got a flame okay they got a ring about that so and uh, they blow out a lot easier this one here this stove has got a flame ring it's more like your traditional style uh, barbecues you know they got the long burner well this one's got a longer burner and it just has a flame all the way around so it actually works really well with these winter well stoves so it just gives out a perfect even temperature in what i've found they, they they cook a really nice roast as well so yeah no i think it's brilliant so my idea is to have a crack at cook cooking a slow low long overtime brisket and see how that goes because i think it'll be brilliant I, I think it's going to turn out hopefully fingers crossed we'll find well i will find out later this afternoon you will find out at the time of filming probably later tonight or tomorrow if i get a chance i've got a few days coming up that i'm really busy actually the next four days i've got a fair bit on so that's now sitting on 137 fahrenheit that looks to be so far early days it's only it's only been about 50 minutes since I started cooking this now go and buy the meter thermometer now whether that means that's what the temperature is on other parts of the oven that's another thing but i'm just going by what that meter external temperature is telling me okay i found when i set it up to 200 fahrenheit which is what I did when I cooked that brisket in that $69 or now I think they're worth $74 uh, bun in smoker I found that if I kept that at 200F it cooked that brisket perfectly and that took over 8 hours for that 2 kilo brisket to cook this is all learning curves okay once I've cooked a few of these I'll have this down pat and then it'll be ready to take to go camping and cook up this awesome brisket for my camping buddies he's uh, lucky enough to join me <laughs> how cool will that be okay so this seems to be ideal now so i've got this turned down a low setting now i can go even lower i can go even lower that's what i love about this stove guys honestly really these stoves look into these stoves okay when they buy them they come they come with a tray with the lid so you can use the roasting etc but honestly if you own one of these go and check out these winter well ovens these winter well ovens because anything you can cook in an oven at home you can cook in this and you can get this really hot as well 
and it's also it's made out of stainless steel so it can be a hand down to the kids so as long as you keep it clean if you're out in a salty environment and you get salt water on it obviously you know stainless steel is still going to rust in salt depending on what type of stainless it is so you want to make sure you keep it clean you can see that I'll keep mine well well clean these are really worth investing in and it'll save you bringing those big gas bottles now always make sure you've got plenty of spares of these easy fine I might go through one of these when I'm cooking up a roast or just under one depending on the size of the roast now this will be interesting to see how long this lasts now this canister that I had in here there wasn't much in there but it did last for over about 40 minutes 50 almost close to 50 minutes before I had to put a new one in so because we got such a low heat here I have a feeling we'd probably finish this cook off and be still using the same gas canister and if that's the case what a bargain we're going to let this run for a while and we'll come back shortly welcome back it is now 11:30. I think it's approximately almost an hour and a half it's going pretty well I mean I've had to come out here a couple of times and check on the temperature so remember when it reaches 165 I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to cover with uh, first then we're going to cover baste with this smoky barbecue sauce and then we're going to cover with alcohol and then we're going to place it back and cook it until it reaches 200 degrees Fahrenheit okay I'm going to take it a little bit past it says on the meter thing to take it to 203 now I'm going to take my time to bring it up to that temperature so it's going pretty good so I wanted this to finish at 4 o'clock even though it's at 143 once it gets to a certain temperature the cooking slows down dramatically and it takes quite a while before it gets to that temperature and I think that's around about from the, about the 180, 190 up to 200 that stretch can take a long time particularly right at the end now if the dreaded chef Ryan if you're watching if you can verify if that is correct but I believe that's what the situation is when you're cooking with the brisket I've sat down watching TV for the past hour and only just come out here now in one hour I've just let this as be so and that's a beauty thing so it's not like something you just need to sit there and babysit all the time this seems to be stable I mean I reckon this can stay like this we've got another 20 21 degrees Fahrenheit here to go before we need to the brisket out and then cover it with the baste it with this and then cover with our foil so it is now 11:34 a.m. let's see how long it takes to get that extra 20 degrees Fahrenheit we're looking for welcome back it is now 12:25 p.m. now how long has that been I don't know I haven't been keeping track of time but I did announce the time before so we're now looking at 164 degrees Fahrenheit so we're only one degree off where we need to be before we remove the brisket baste it in this wonderful sauce and then cover it with the alcohol and place it back in and then bring it up slowly till it reaches 200 degrees Fahrenheit Now we're going to baste on some of this awesome barbecue, smoky barbecue sauce over the top. So what we'll do is we'll pour some in here. Got one of those basting brushes. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but these looking like a proper brisket.
Let's baste on a little bit more on this side here. Now we're going to wrap this up. Remembering we've got the meter probe on here on this side that we need to keep exposed. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Let's now put it back in the oven. Very little effort we managed to achieve that in a foldable oven. I had the ambient temperature sitting around about 180. I mean it's early days but I think when I initially started it and it was on that 200 just under 200 and I thought it was done to cook too fast I think it probably would have been alright if I left it at the 200 because I think initially when they first start cooking it does cook fast the first you know part up until it gets around about this stage or just before this stage but I have a feeling from now on it's going to take a while to get up that 200 Fahrenheit. So we've got about, right now it's sitting internal temperature right now, it's sitting on 161. So it's a lost 4 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to build that up again now. And right now we've got a temperature in here sitting around about that 170, 180 according to the meter probe there which I think seems to be ideal. So with the meter, meter probe, as you're aware, when it's cooking, you can see here, I've got a graph here. So I can click on this graph icon and it'll show me, you probably can't see that right now, and it'll show me a graph and shows me what stage it's at. Now I can see when I removed it, I see how the temperature of the meat internally has dropped down slightly. I can also see the internal temp has dropped down as well because we didn't have the probe was not inside the oven remember because right now I don't know what the internal temperature ambient temperature is inside because it's got to be above a certain degree before it will actually acknowledge what the external temperature is it hasn't reached that now but that will build up pretty quick that won't take too long so it's now 12.41, so that took literally less than 5-6 minutes to have done that. What we might do later on, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Might take a peaky, sticky beak look when it's around about the 180, 190, and see if we need to baste any more of this sauce on. But I think I've put plenty on there anyway, so let's see how they go. So what I'm going to do shortly is I'm going to shoot off down the corner shop down the road shortly and I'm going to get some fresh bread rolls and get some fresh casserole. So I think this will be ideal. The, hopefully it'll be really nice and tender 
where we could literally pull it apart after I slice it. Let's see if we can achieve that. We're probably going to be pushing it for the first time cooking it inside here. But hey, you never know. I, I have had some good guidance with that first cook up that I've done with that brisket in the $69 Bunnings smoker. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's my most popular video out with something over 65,000 views. I kid you not, 65,000 views and constantly getting around 2,200 views per month. So thank you guys, that's, that's awesome. So I'm glad you actually found some good use <laughs> out of that video. Tell you what, up here in Queensland, whew, winter this time just doesn't exist. It is so hot here. Ambient temperature right now is 32 degrees here right now. 32 degrees and it's supposed to be winter. I am boiling with this on actually. Because I've got a t-shirt on underneath. 42% humidity. At least that's the saving grace. The only reason why I'm not sweating as a pig right now is because the humidity is a bit lower. <laughs> so even though it's 32.4, it doesn't feel like it's 32.4. So, But there's still humidity though. I still feel it. There's still humidity. But it's crazy. Okay. So we're going to take another little break. And if something exciting happens soon, we'll come back. Otherwise, we'll be back when it's around about the 180. So we'll see how time goes. And hopefully, that'll be in about... That would be nice if that's in about an hour and a half time. So, till then, eh? Cheers. Welcome back. Let's check the time now. It is nearly 3.15 p.m. It smells brilliant. If it comes out anywhere near as good as it smells, I'm going to be very, very happy. We are 185 internal now. So we're going to be looking at around about the 203. So very shortly, I'm going to remove the brisket out. And I'm going to use another temp meat, temp probe that I've got, temperature probe. And I'm going to check to see what the temperature, internal temperature is throughout different areas of it. So I want to try to hit that 200 mark minimum. As soon as we hit that 200, then what we'll do is we'll remove it. We'll leave it in the outfall and just let it rest for a while until we're ready to cut up and serve. <laughs> and I can't wait. It's not too far away. <laughs> so, so far it's been cooking for about five and a half hours. I'm going to give it, sort of, say, probably another hour. Hopefully my mum will like it. She normally doesn't eat barbecue, so I've got that barbecue flavour in there. So hopefully, I mean, I didn't put too much there. So hopefully that'll go well with her. <laughs> we'll find out soon, eh? Not too long now. Ooh, it's getting exciting. <laughs> I don't know where you, but I can't wait to get stuck into this. It's going to be so great. Oh, yum, yum. I'm hungry. I'm hungry already. <laughs> but I'm going to be patient. Still got about an hour and a half before we can eat this. <laughs> it is now 4.25. Wow. I mean, I was told the last bit of cooking, the last... 10 degrees Celsius thereabouts generally will take a long time and it certainly has now you might remember when I cooked the that brisket that seven hour long brisket in the $69 bunning smoker if you haven't seen that video check it out when I cooked it in that we took it out at this stage because the same thing happened I can remember now it actually sat on around the 190 Fahrenheit and it didn't really climb it only sort of climbed the two three degrees and we thought well this is strange so it must be cooked so we took it off but then 
Ryan, the dreaded chef, says that was a big mistake. If we had have waited a bit longer, be patient, waited longer to reach us at 200, it would have came out even better. I mean, as good as it came out, it actually turned out really good. It would have just fell apart when I sliced it. So I'm being, I'm going to be patient here. Ryan, you told me, he sent me a tip this morning. Be patient, be patient, be patient. Let it cook. So I'm going to be patient here. I'm going to have to set my, some lights in here. So we'll have a bit of a break right now. I'm going to set up some lights so the next time we cut <laughs> to the feed, you'll suddenly see some LED lights set up. And I'll tell you what, I've got some spectators hanging around me all day. The whole time I'm at the back cooking this, there's a whole heap of magpies here is just enjoying watching me do this. I'm sure they want some of this food, but sorry guys, <laughs> they know I don't feed them, so I don't know why they hang around me all this time. Let me set up some LED lights here, because I think we're going to need it in the next take, and see you then. Hey, welcome back. Well, I got the LED lights on. <laughs> now, it's a lot darker than what it looks, because I've got the pro camera here, I'm filming it. I had to open the lens right up to let a lot more light in as well as using the LED. So it is now 5.05 .05 and it gets dark here around about 5.30 so it's the sun, sun, the sun is, to, is gone now. So right, according to this we are on 202 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to check it properly. I've got another thermometer here that I picked up some time ago. It's a professional thermometer and it's accurate to within half a degree Celsius. Wow, that is so soft. But it's 96, 97. The thicker part here is about 90 degrees. You would have noticed that obviously that brisket is not evenly sized, as you can see. The temperatures vary, the thick part to the middle part. Not a lot I can do with that. I mean, it was just a cheap brisket from Coles. It was on special for $15 a kilo. So that's why I am attempting this today. I don't know how much briskets normally are. If this turns out really good, which it appears to have, I am definitely going to get a better quality brisket next time. 203 Fahrenheit. So per, according to this, that's the perfect temperature. So it's resting now. I'm not sure how long you're supposed to rest these. <laughs> I mean, I'm only going to give it about 10 minutes because I've got folks there waiting for a meal. And some of them want to try to get back home before it's dark. So I'm going to quickly let this go for 10 minutes. And then we will carve it up. All right, we'll do it right here. So I'll let it rest for 10 minutes. And then we'll come back. I think she is ready. It's been resting for a while now. Ooh, it's still very warm ideally I would have liked to have left, left it rest a bit longer but we have people here that need to eat so we're having a look at it for the first time now wow look at that and they look great so there you go there's our brisket. There we go. You have a gander of that while I go and do a bit of cleaning.
Mmm. I tell you what, the first, the first fire, it um, tastes pretty good, eh? Well, my kidney it tastes really good. So that's just slicing right through. So this knife is not not exactly extremely sharp so if anything I reckon I might have just overdone it just a tad So all up, that's cooked for over seven hours. Oh, look at that. Just, wow, look at that. It just falls apart. Check that out, guys. Look at this. This section is perfect. Look at that. This section, look at that. That is just falling apart. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. So it's cooked this thicker part absolutely to perfection. And the other parts are a bit thinner. Just a little overdone. Not much though, just a little. Still tastes awesome. I mean, you have to be very, very picky to not like that. So how awesome is that? Look at that. Well, guys, these folks here are hungry. There we go. I'm just going to plate this up now. And I'm going to call this video it. I call that a success. I don't know about you, but I think that looks really, really good. Look at these pieces here. Mum, that is really hot. If you touch that, you'll burn your hands. Look at these pieces. Don't they look awesome? So there you go. All right, that's it. All done. All completed. Now, I can't hang around, guys. So, thanks for watching. I'm going to eat that now. I did try a couple of pieces as I was carving it, and it tasted really nice. So, for me, it's an A1. So, whew, a lot of work. Funny, I didn't waste all that time this morning trying to do that live feed. 40 minutes I lost. This could have been ready for quite some time. So, it's nearly 5.30. I can't believe we started cooking this at quarter to 10 this morning. 5.30 before it's ready to eat. Now I could have cooked this a lot faster and in hindsight next time I probably will. I'm going to start off with a higher temperature and bring it up. Now the smoking chip made no effect. I'm not surprised. I don't think it was hot enough. I think for the smoking chips to work you need that probably 260 Fahrenheit 250 or so to get them hot enough before they smoke. But I'll try that in the next lot. So till then guys, look after yourself and cheers. Subscribe please and put a like on this video. Bye.